Hey, it's Chris with Life 180, and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the three scenarios that we're coming into economically, and why all three scenarios lead to falling cap rates for index universal life policies. Now, I know I've, I've talked a lot about this, about the interest rate environment, the uncertainty in the markets, and the fact that if interest rates go up, uh, stock market prices come down, real estate market prices come down, like all these different things happen, and so one way or the other, that um, that IULs are in trouble. Well, I've been doing more and more research into this, and, and you know because I I know this stuff I, I, that it's true, and I'm just trying to I'm always trying to figure out. I it, it always confuses me when I say this stuff. Like, why is it that people are not getting what I'm talking about? Like, what 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 am I what am I doing wrong? What am I not communicating properly to get people to understand this? Because if you if you were to go talk to an Index Universal Life trainer or whole salesman uh, or, or something like that or salesperson, they're gonna focus on, pretty much always, they're gonna focus on the positives. And if you just look at the positive spins and the upsides of Index Universal Life, they look amazing. But the bottom line is if Index Universal Life was that awesome, I'd own a ton of it. I, I refuse because at this point in time, the uncertainty is just is just too much right now. And so I wanna go over three scenarios right now that we have and because it's it's not just about the performance of the index you know say the s p 500 and what it does you know if they say you get a 10 percent upside and zero percent uh downside right protection so you can't lose your money it's not just about the performance of that because you know you you, you don't actually participate in that index, you know, or you don't actually own the index. What you do is you participate in it by buying call options with a portion of the money. Now I've done videos on this. I'm not gonna get into the details of how they buy the call options. You can go back and watch my other videos on that. But the one thing I'll say is it's, it's, it's an algorithm or it's kind of an, a mathematical equation when you look at the scenario and what causes the direction of the cap rates for all these IUL carriers. And if you think about it, like, listen, Pack Life just reduced their um, their cap rates on their older IUL products again. When they first started selling these cap rates, like if you bought um, an IUL product with Pack Life several years ago, they would have sold that product to you with a 13% cap rate and an illustrated assumption on the on the on the illustration of 8%. That's what they did. Then AG49 came out. They've since been kind of laddering down their cap rate with Pack Life on this product. And what was once a 13% um, cap rate with an 8% illustrated value, they've reduced that to an 8% cap rate now. 8% cap rate with a 5% illustrated value. And how that impacts people, because when you bought that, this is why I'm, I'm saying like, there's nothing about IULs that are guaranteed. And if you bought that illustrated value and you started paying $20,000 a month into that with the assumptions that you were gonna have that 13% cap and 8% assumption and they told you that, listen, look at the stock market. Why would they reduce cap rates? The market's doing really well, right? Well, it's not that simple because you have to look at the interest rate environment because the, the interest rate environment is actually what dictates you know, the, the, the general performance of, of the general account for the life insurance carrier. And so the fixed market environment is dictated by the, the low federal funds interest rate at 0% right now. So as long as we, we remain in a low interest rate environment, fixed accounts for insurance companies and everybody else for that matter are gonna struggle. That's gonna put pressure on cap rates. The other thing that's gonna put pressure on cap rates is option prices. Now, there are things that, uh, that carriers are doing to reduce their cost of option prices, like creating proprietary indexes. To me, that's a very, very dangerous game. Um, and it's not one I'm willing to play with uh, because if you look at all these proprietary indexes that these, these companies are, are pumping out, they're able to show 30 year historical results based on hypothetical data. Well, if I'm building a proprietary index right now, all I have to do is look hypothetically at a basket of products that have performed within the spectrum that I want them to perform and then build that index and be able to say hypothetical value. But as any uh, pro forma of any investment will tell you is past results are not indicative of future success, right? And so it's important to understand that, but it's, it's getting to that point because the reality is options prices have gone 
through the roof over the past decade for the classic indexes like the S&P 500, like the Dow, like the Russell 2000, things of that nature. And those are the indexes that matter the most because that is what has ultimately been driving the IUL market up until the past couple of years when they've created these proprietary indexes. So those are the two factors, the, the interest rate environment remaining low and options prices going up. Now, if we think about that, there are basically three scenarios in which this could all play out at this point in time. So scenario one is, is basically option prices stay low and interest rates stay low. And if you look at that scenario, if interest rates stay low and option prices stay low, well, what's gonna happen is performance in the account is gonna stay low, so that's gonna to continue uh, to put downward pressure on cap rates for both whole life and index universal life. Whole life dividend rates are gonna, are gonna remain low and cap rates are gonna continually drop. Even when these companies that say they're not, they, they didn't need to drop them a year ago are continually dropping them right now. It's, it's, it's insane. Now, I'm gonna make another video on all the companies that are dropping their cap rates right now. It's, it's absolutely astounding. Now, the second scenario is that we're gonna have an increase in interest rates, which there are a lot of people out there that believe that interest rates have nowhere to go but up. So let's think about the fact that interest rates can go up and in, and in an increasing interest rate environment, say that 10 times fast, in an increasing interest rate environment, both dividend rates and whole life insurance and cap rates would have the potential to go up. However, if at the same time option rates go up, which Typically, they do in an increasing interest rate environment, option rate prices increase along with it. If you did that, that would actually lend to the benefit of whole life insurance and that would actually hamper index universal life because as option prices go up, that minimizes the insurance company's ability to hedge, which is, which is exactly how they, they create the success of how index universal life works. They're taking what they know they can get on a guaranteed basis from a profit perspective and they're buying call options with it. And if those call options get more expensive, you can buy fewer of them with that amount of money. And so that pressure remains on there. So the benefit of increasing interest rates actually is negated by the increasing of call option prices, right? Does that make sense? So that's option number two. Scenario number three, I don't really see it happening um, because of the fact that it would require interest rates to drop, which Listen, we're at almost 0% right now. The only way it drops is by going into a negative interest rate environment or by, by continuing to just print trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, which will create an inflation problem on its own. And if we do that, big time problems, but I, I gotta talk about the scenario possibility because it, you know, hey, even though it's a, a, a far shot possibility, it is still a possibility. And so scenario number three is that interest rates drop and option rates get cheaper. Now, the initial drop of the cost of, of the options is going to give a little bump or a little stability to the cap rates for a period of time, maybe a year or two, um, depending on how long it lasts and how that whole scenario plays out. But for whatever window when, this, when this, the, money, the, the numbers are moving around, if the interest rates drop and the and options prices go down, it'll create a little bump, but at the end of the day, the pressure of the fixed market accounts is gonna put so much stress on the life insurance companies that that protection will be short-lived and both um, IULs and dividend rates will have cap rates and dividend prices drop. That's why I'm a big believer in the 4% guarantees inside of whole life contracts. If you can get them right now, get them. Um, and that's why I'm a big believer that everything that you see, I'm gonna do another video here it's gonna be a, a long video because I actually, I subscribe to this thing and uh, this just this amazing research uh, center that, that has amazing content on current cap rates. Um, it changes in companies and I'm gonna actually take a video, the next video that I put out, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and see it. Uh, the next video I put out is going to have a list of companies and the cap rates that they've started at and how they've reduced the cap rates in the last 12 months alone. And I'm telling you right now, it is a scary, scary world right now for IUL. They've lost their identity and um, they're not what people have been selling them for for the past decade and a half to two decades. It's a pretty, pretty scary world. So if you have any questions at all, any comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I do my best to respond to every single comment that people leave for me. Um, and 
As always, I mean, I hope you found value in this video. If you did, I would appreciate a like. YouTube loves, you know, it really helps tell them that, you know, this, you're finding this video content valuable. And so anytime you can give it a like, I, that's super appreciated by me and by the channel. It's helping us reach more people and be more successful and, you know, make that impact that I'm looking to make in the industry. And, you know, of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell. That way you get notified every single time I launch a new video. And uh, I hope this video finds you well. Have a blessed, inspirational day, and I'll talk to you on the next video. Take care.